talking about where it's stopping at the wrong part of the intersection yeah <laughs> you hear that that's loud enough to slam on the brakes <laughs> so good evening everyone we're back doing another drive and i'm with mark hello coding mark on twitter yes i'll put our twitter handles down below too so he's actually back with us so I think it was two built ago, yeah. two, beta five maybe, this is beta seven, or beta eight, I don't know which one we're on, but it was a couple releases ago. So I'm curious to see if he notices any differences with the new software. The only UI changes I saw was the text messaging. You know, the text messaging is that new like bubble mode, like iMessage, and the screen for the infotainment, you can see all the different sources and Spotify is a little bit different. So that's kind of the only changes I, I've noticed. And I honestly haven't really noticed FSD driving changes to me. Like it's still handling roundabouts the same to me. I don't know. You'll see if it's handling it differently. Seems like there's a few more cars on the road than last time too. So that should be interesting. There's yeah. a, lot, a, lot of, a lot more colors going on here. Oh yeah. It's about almost five o'clock on Friday evening. So there's a lot more traffic at this time of day. So this is going to be a good test to see how it's handling. And, you know, I've always complained about the hesitation of lane changes, especially with a lot of traffic and people honking at me. So <laughs> we're just letting it drive all the way to the mall. <laughs> they actually don't know we're coming, so I'll just drop it off for them. Did you see the flicker? One interesting thing too, it seems like, which I think we would expect, but it still is able to brake properly even with lack of regen. Like it looks like some regen is not active maybe because of the temperature, but it's not driving any differently, so. Mm -hmm. No. And you know, I'm kind of sensitive. Ooh. That's way <laughs> too close. Whoa. That was close, you guys. I mean, it was, oh my gosh. Bright red, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I had to. I would have. That turned was it off way earlier. too close. I mean, uh, I've never had that happen before, and I drive. Was that close to you, or am I just like overreacting here? The because... mirror looked okay, but from the visualization, it looked way too close. Yeah. I would have turned it off immediately. <laughs> oh. Because, I mean, it showed bright red on the screen. And I don't recall it ever creeping so close to me. I mean, normally it would center between. It wasn't centering. There was actually a lot of gap between the, the line there. I was looking on this side. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Not gonna make that. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't changing lanes. I was kind of curious from, I don't know if it was your video or someone else's where I was wondering about these left turns because right now the turn is a solid white line, but before it was dotted. And it mm -hmm. seemed like it hesitated to switch into the left lane. So I wonder if that's because it was solid or just it didn't make the decision fast enough. I'm not sure. I think it was the decision because I've actually never had a problem getting into the lane here before. Mm -hmm. And this was actually the first time I've been in the same, same path with this software version. So there is something else happening, but look at all, there's a lot more objects rendering on the screen. You see that? I wonder if that is making a difference, possibly, because it has to keep track of those. And time of day. I'm driving, you know, in the evening, and there's a lot of traffic now at this time of day. Like you can see all the cars around us. There's a lot of traffic. The visualization's cool though with all those cars. Oh look, it's frame rate. There's a frame rate issue. Look at this. Is it usually like really smooth? I've never had it trip out like that. Hmm. Like so that is making a difference. Feel. You can feel that there's a Oh, it's getting a little better now. Maybe it was the camera's train. Oh yeah, it is jumping. See, it's jumping. Interesting, I wonder if we're having a frame rate issue in the autopilot system, or if it's just the screen. It could be just the visual too. I hope so. So in this particular turn, look at that. Yeah, that see was how it was crossing wide. right over? And there was a car there. And there was a car there. But she was moving over, so it They were fine. moving over, we were fine, right. So we weren't gonna hit anyone, but you saw it, it was just crossing right over the line into the, the wrong lane. 
thankfully the car to the right of us was actually changing to the right hand lane so it left a f less left us a safe distance i wonder if there's i mean i was kind of thinking of that a few days ago like these the turns on fsd beta like on one hand you do want to take them a little wide at times because you don't want to curb your wheels but the other time how do you know when there's a car there or not like when do you go wide when do you not sometimes you have to go wide you know and it's so natural for us as drivers because if we see like a curb or see something sticking out we naturally just draw a different path to go out and yeah. then turn but we still do it within limits of if there's like dotted dashed lines or something we still stay within those boundaries or we break if there's another car to the side of us right and then go into their lane a little bit then out right so I think that they're, maybe what they're trying to do is balance that because in this particular release, I've noticed it crossing over the white line a lot more frequently, um, especially on on-ramps on freeways. I've seen it cross over, like I wouldn't, I don't want to say everyone's bad drivers, but I don't do that. I always stay within the lines, but a lot of drivers naturally just cross over, especially on a freeway on-ramp. I don't know, are you, are you someone that crosses that white line on a freeway ramp? Uh, you mean like a merge? Like, you know, like a, so like a freeway ramp, it's like curving. Oh, your turn. Yeah, I saw that video. Yeah. Yeah, what it goes, like, because it's so sharp, it's almost like going over the line. Right. I. Do you cross over or do you stay within the lines? I like, usually cross over, actually. So oh. maybe someone's training it that way. <laughs> you know, that could be what's happening here. Maybe what's happening is that other drivers... <laughs> okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Well, it, it seemed like it was in control, but it was just a fast control. Yeah. Because, like, it it did not hit the curb or anything like that. <laughs> it was very exact, but people don't drive exact. Like, normally they ease into it. This was like a forward, left, forward. Yeah. Very computerized. So it's kind of like what we're just talking about. Like, you know, are you the kind of driver that kind of crosses over the white lines, or are you someone that stays perfectly in the lines? So, like, that was someone that was perfectly in the lines. And when you're getting on a freeway on ramp, more people are more lenient to just gracefully like cross over that line if it makes the turn more natural you know so this release i'm noticing that on ramps and off ramps it'll cross that white line a lot more frequently for me i actually try to stay more computerized in those lines and i slow down so i usually take the curve a lot more slower to stay in it that's because you're on chill mode yeah so i'm usually not on chill mode i'm a chill driver so. <laughs> i'm a chill driver you know maybe that's some logic that they need to program is maybe when you're in chill mode define more into those lines make it you know, more natural, slow turning. Like this was a lot, pretty aggressive to me. Well, I'm pretty sure that last maneuver was not chill. Oh no. <laughs> that was like Sport Plus and BMW yeah. terms. <laughs> yeah, I I would think that the, maybe they're taking an input of like G-Force or Gyro for that. Like that's how, why they're cutting it. Because if they followed the lines, maybe it would be too, too much G-Force. So maybe they're just trying to smooth it out for us. I don't know. That was a lot of G-force in my opinion. Like I felt like it was a lot. And if they were doing smoothing, they would take G-force into consideration and maybe they're not considering that. So maybe in chill mode, they can have a threshold of saying, if you're over this G-force, go over the line or, you know, not hit a car, but like take it slower, lower the speed to lower that uh, G inertial force. That's actually a really good, good way to do logic programming, I think for, you know, to define chill versus sport. And that last turn I really liked strange, because it, but okay. it like, it did the, the left. And then when it got close to the barrier, it slowed down. People do that all the time. Yeah. Like, that's very natural. So like it slowed down maybe so that it had more time to make a sharper turn. So that, that was like very human, I thought. No, it, it is. Like, I feel like they're, they're putting a lot more natural human. That's a strange. little wide. We're almost. Yeah. And I feel like we're going really yeah, people... fast. You feel like it feels a little fast to me through here. Even though we're going the speed limit, it feels kind of fast. I think because all these cars were Not stopped. Moving. Usually people would kind of be cautious around them. Right. You know, maybe that's something that they do need to apply too. Is see how we're like coming up so quickly to this? Is apply that same kind of uh, adjacent lane speed control like they do on the highway. Mm -hmm. Apply the same logic to the city because I've never seen that slow down in the city thing. So maybe it is different code. You know, like see how aggressive it is. Yeah. That's not giving anyone a chance if they wanted one. Yeah. Oh, oh, I 
I think it may have wanted to turn over there because I was, unless I was gripping the wheel too hard there. <laughs> Sorry, I disengaged. That was my mistake. I think I was gripping the wheel too hard. I didn't want it to go into those cars. <laughs> I, yeah, it's doing kind of a little bit more accelerating than I would expect. Yeah, and and it's really hard to to tell to, to show people that because like. It, it is really aggressive, and I'm not just like saying that. Like it, it, it aggressively accelerates, and I, th I would say if you're in chill, don't drive so hard. Like just be more gentle on the pedals, I mean, <laughs> the I pedals, the steering, like everything. From a safety perspective, I think that was perfectly fine. It just wasn't supernatural because, like, we sped up almost like speeding up so they could take the lane, mm -hmm. but then it slowed down, and then it sped up again. Mm -hmm. So like people usually wouldn't do that unless they were lost or confused. So I'm thinking maybe it just thought there wasn't an opening. So then it's like, okay, I can't take that right now. So it's probably going to try again because we have half a mile. Or, because it has to get over, I think, right? It does, and we have to get over two lanes now. The pathing is straight, though, so... <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> I think they heard me loud and clear on that because I, I was really frustrating to me. Every time I come up to a stop, the steering wheel would just, like, cockeye over to the left or the right. I, I think you do you remember that. Did they do it with you too? I think so. I had that actually happen today. I don't. I mean, I don't have FSD beta, but I went to a, a red light and then I wanted to go a little faster acceleration than what excel autopilot will do. So I just hit the brake to turn it off, and the wheel went like this mm. after turning it off. So I don't know why that was. Maybe it was trying to straighten it out or something, mm. or some kind of disengagement of the levers. I don't know. I I like. I just, I had, I said it before, I, I really wish like an in, Tesla engineer could sit down with me and explain s every, s things going on. I would just love that. I would be geeking out so much. There's someone in our blind spot. Okay, now we're good. Yeah, there's a car next to us. And it was funny, they didn't let us in, but the car accelerated like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to go anyway. <laughs> Which, that's really human. That's... It's not getting over though. Is this our turn? Well, it's coming up. I like that it's canceling though. Oh, look at that. I didn't know you could do that. That's always the full route. I didn't know that, I didn't know you could do that. I don't really play with my screen too much when I'm driving. <laughs> I noticed something also like this with regular autopilot. So if you have FSD and the traffic control turned on, then when the light turns green, even if you're like five cars back, it actually edges forward a little even if the cars are not moving. That's so it's like one, it. one thing I noticed, it, the light detection in the, in this in the software is incredible. I've never had a problem with it. And, and I'm not gonna say who else is having some issues, but there's some other testers. They're having some serious traffic light issues in this particular build for whatever reason. They are on different models than I am. So I have a feeling maybe it's something to do with different model adjustments that they're doing. Maybe they're focusing more on the three for some reason, or they don't have enough input from I'm not sure. S and X's. I don't know. I think it might be city specific because like I have oh. I would say I get false positives probably like maybe two percent, five percent of the time. Where your car is stopping for no reason or you're accelerating for no reason. So like it's detecting the wrong color or something like that? Well, I think it maybe associates the wrong light with the lane because I'll get my beep, oh. I'll get the chime for the green light, but it's not actually green. So it's usually like I think when a left is kind of close to your lane. Let's go, Carl. But I'm going straight. So I'm taking over here because it's not uh, being aggressive enough to get into this lane. So I've turned off FSD for this moment. The path thing looks okay, but it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't doing the maneuver. Yeah, it just wasn't being aggressive enough, which is, you know, you. It, it's funny. Like I, I say, I, I think the car's being too aggressive sometimes, and other times I think it's not being aggressive enough. But when you're in significant traffic like this, you need to be more aggressive or assertive, and get into your lane, because the cars are leaving us gaps, but the car wasn't taking it. So, you know, I, it, they need to raise the assertive level, aggression level, confidence level, whatever you want to call it, to at least get through this. And it, I mean, it wouldn't have required much aggression because you're on chill mode. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> so now I'm not turning FSD on here. I know it's routing okay, but it, 
it drives really fast through parking lots for some reason. So I've seen it, what's happening is when you get into a parking lot, it'll stay stuck on the speed limit of the street you were on. Oh. And it'll just barrel through a parking lot going like 40 miles an hour. And I'm not gonna do that today. So. <laughs> it seems like this one is detecting 15, which is good. It is, but it could be because I turned it off. Oh. You know, I turned it off before we pulled in the parking lot. Yeah. I've just noticed when you're pulling in and you're on FSD, it sometimes will say stuck. If that makes sense. It'll say stuck I've, on whatever the speed limit was. I've seen that as well with regular autopilot. Yeah, and I think it's just the way that the software is working. I wonder if Electric Joy is here. I've never been to the supercharger. Oh, you've never been to the Arden Mall supercharger? No. I don't think that Electric Joy is here today. Darn. Nice, nice marketing. Hoping, yeah, it's really cool. So, you know, they they detail your car while you're charging, which is like super awesome. I actually had something for them, but it doesn't look like they're in today. So I'll, maybe I'll have to schedule a time with the owner to, to meet them. It sees a lot, but... It works really well. So you see all of the, the different... The barriers, yeah. I was starting to look at that in my car. I mean, I don't have all of this, but like with the, it still shows, you know, like the lane lines, the left and right, even if there aren't lane lines. And it was making them thinner when there was a parked car and then wider when there was not a parked mm. car. So I think it's kind of comparable logic, but just the visualized differently. So I don't know if I had talked to you about this, but I did, I did a test for my own knowledge on something. So there was, when this first came out, the night that it came out, people were like, oh, it's using map data. It must be using map data when it was showing all this stuff. And I was able to actually duplicate that it's not using map data. It's actually, what you're seeing is the vision, not map data. So what happened was I came up to a stop and there was a truck that was blocking the camera right here. It was a big, huge truck. And sure enough, that part of the intersection was missing from the screen. And as soon as the truck moved, all of a sudden the entire intersection appeared and all the traffic appeared. So, oh look, it's <laughs> having trouble rendering objects. Oh yeah. I mean, there are a ton of cars parked. Yeah. It actually was having trouble rendering. So I wonder if maybe it's a frame rate issue inside the cameras. It's still spinning. Autopilot. It could also be just rendering on the screen. I don't know. So I had some issues with the traffic light detection at one point with intersections kind of disappearing the whole screen would kind of disappear mm -hmm. and i think it might have been a frame rate issue inside the autopilot camera so oh. green just posted that on two screen captures he took they were showing 24 frames a second like they were dropping under 30 frames a second for the autopilot system hmm. and that was hardware three so i wonder if there is a glitch in the system that's not allowing us to get full processing power Especially when there's too many objects appearing, so see all this stuff happening. And what's that? Is that pink like the bush or something? So, something that's like in the middle of a road that's not a road edge is purple. Hmm. Like a median, purple. A road edge like a curb is always red. Yeah, see it's detecting that as like a median. It's like a combination of both. Mm -hmm. Look at all the objects, how they keep disappearing too. Like we're driving through Arden Fair parking lot and there's just cars and everywhere. There's stuff everywhere here. Not in FSD at all. So I'm not going to enable it until we're over here because it's always, you know, I'm not going to just show FSD performing poorly because it's, I just know it doesn't work very well in these scenarios right now. So until it starts working more natural, I'll start showing it through parking lots, but it just doesn't. <laughs> People are like, Oh, why aren't you turning it on or showing this? I'm like, because it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I'm not going to show it. It's just not... There's no point. There's a lot of traffic. Mm-hmm. Because it's going to be rough. Okay, so let's turn it back on. So... <laughs> See? Well, it looks like it was a quick <laughs> center. <laughs> yeah. Why is the turn signal? Oh. Probably because we have to turn left here. Which oh, that was really nice. Did it great. That was better than human, I would say. 
Now, because the code hasn't switched, oh, the speed limit did adjust correctly, so that's good. It has a tendency to stay stuck on the city streets speeds when I was getting on on ramps with the oh. code is still enabled like this, but it looks like they fixed that. I noticed on my way here the so I was using the Navigant Autopilot, so I had the one bar in the middle, and then the second I got to the off ramp, it switched to the two bar. So I guess that's when it would have switched to FST code. Oh, if you had it. That's right. That's exactly right. So this would be the two bar mode. And as soon as we it transitions to highway mode, you're going to see the UI change. That's going to be the code switch. Now there the code just switched. So now we're in standard autopilot code. And it will not perform the same. So autopilot on the highway in this particular mode is the code that everyone else is using. I don't see any differences between anyone's autopilot and mine. I don't know for sure, but uh, I think James posted a video a day or two ago where he was doing this really curvy back road at night and with the auto uh, high beams. Mm -hmm. And it was taking turns, I think, better than my car, but maybe it was just my perception. It was like staying centered better than mine, I think, would for mm -hmm. that sharp of turns. So I don't know if that... Was it on this or was it on the FSD code? I don't remember, actually. I have to double check. I thought it was this, but maybe it was FSD. Well, because you were with me, you know, with the FSD code, we did 90 degree turns. Yeah. Straight 90 degree turns, and it worked just fine. We did, uh, no intervention required. Like, sometimes for mine, if, if the turns get too sharp, it will get a little close to the line. But his was, like, perfect. Hmm. On really sharp, I think it was maybe 55 mile per hour roads. So... Hmm. Hard but to say, though. Again, I don't have any <laughs> problems with autopilot on the highway. I never have. You know, maybe back in the very early days, because when I when I first took delivery, autopilot didn't have the side cameras activated, so no side cameras were activated, like your car, because we had we have the same build pretty much a month after each other build date, and I didn't have the software enabled for my side repeaters at all. There was no vision for any side side cars. And I think auto lane changes was not, you had to, it was supervised. So I had to tell it when and it wouldn't check anything. Mm -hmm. Like it was kind of like manual auto lane change. I don't know. Yeah. And I thought I saw like when Green posted those, all those settings that seemed like were maybe autopilot settings. I mean, I don't know if they're true, but if that was true, it seemed like they did have some options for like lane change enabled or disabled or something like that. Mm -hmm. So. I, I'm kind of curious. It seems like once we switched back to navigate on autopilot on the freeway, now you're back to your manual lane changes, right? It won't mm -hmm. do that for you. Yeah, because back you have in the day. Off. Yeah, yeah. It won't do. It won't initiate the auto lane change for me on the highway. And I didn't notice any change in the city with that toggle on or off. Personally, I didn't see any change because it just changes lanes in the city by itself. <laughs> and you can still manually do that. Like yeah, a, yeah. You can still click on the turn signal and it'll just change lane even if you don't have a nav point set. Hmm. So like if I wanted to switch lanes now, it would just switch lanes. I really like how you have the blue the blue D as well. So you know like drive as an autopilot. Yeah. Like it's not you driving. That's true, I, need, I didn't even pay attention to that. Yeah, see I've had the beta for what, five, <laughs> five or six weeks now? So I'm so used to how the screen looks now with the numbers here and, and this being off center still. <laughs> So you see it because you you don't have this view, right? You don't have it. Yours is still in the center. It's quite a bit thinner, yeah, as well. And there's some settings on the bottom. Across. Yeah, yeah, the wiper. Yep. I like that the it's like a card now. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing is the no, the music now is is all unified between Spotify on this version with the version you have now because you have the latest release, right? Mm -hmm. Forty eight. Let's see, I have to confirm on the highway. Do you ever confirm? Like with the... Uh... Always. But, you know, I confirm in the direction that I would nam normally turn on the signal. I don't hit the gear stock. Like, for me, that is so weird because if you hold it too long, it'll go to neutral. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't, wanna, I don't want it to go to neutral. So I confirm the direction that I actually want to go, even though it, you can go on either one. And I pretty much tell it when I know it's safe to go, not when I know it's unsafe. I tell it when it's safe. <laughs> like I'm, I mean, that I'm was a 
control freak. I think that it was lane great. change was very... Like, it was basically perfect. Because it was great. It was aggressive enough that it needed to be. It got into the lane fast enough. Like, it wasn't, you know, just waiting around. Right, and that's what I always say. Like, I don't have problems with navigating an autopilot, autopilot on the highway. It works great for me. Maybe because I'm a control freak and, you know, I tell it when to change lanes. You know, it'll confirm, but then I just tell it and it goes. Like Another thing that I noticed that was new, at least on my autopilot, that it is doing better now is when you're when you're trying to change lanes or no when you're going straight and there's a car kind of like not paying attention so they're veering into your lane autopilot used to like kind of hit the brakes pretty hard now it actually it doesn't really flinch it's like someone even crosses your line a little the autopilot just keeps going oh so i mean it, it doesn't do it unsafely but it just like it doesn't slam the brakes like it used to i don't think i've ever noticed that a lot of times people are not paying attention, I guess, where I'm driving, and they kind of veer oh. a little bit. You know, I because my my whole job situation is different. You know, I was laid off in April because of COVID, so I used to have a almost 100-mile commute every day on the highway out to Lincoln. And, you know, now I, I rarely drive on the highways, so I think I would experience that a lot more if I was driving a lot more on the freeways, but now I, I've never... I ever, I'm rarely ever driving except for, whoa. <laughs> that was odd. Not I, sure what that was about, honestly. <laughs> I would say humans have, do do that sometimes, but yeah, it was a little kind of weird. Like, people hit their brakes kind of hard sometimes, don't they? Yeah, that was weird. Because we were going downhill, but you would expect it to be smoother. Yeah, it was just, that was strange. It was... Like, I've had that happen when it de would detect, uh, when it would detect a light on the off-ramp from a carpool lane. Over here, it's done that a few times. But there was no light to slow down with, so I don't know why it did that little slowdown thing. I've, I've been meaning to ask if you, did you notice any improvements at all with the yellow lines and white lines? No. No, I, just thought, I just saw that pop up, but before it was fine. It was working, it was looking good before. Maybe it lost some of it, maybe it has some obstructions. You know, and I don't do a lot of night driving because it, it's really been rough for me and it's been raining. And you know, we're in performance models and it gets kind of slippery. So I've been kind of trying to be as safe as possible. So this is actually the first night drive I've done with this software release. So it's the first for, look at this. I this is a I... tough edge here. Yeah, but yeah, no, that was gonna hit. You agree, right? Yeah, that was too sharp. <laughs> See, I have a passenger confirming. <laughs> but one thing I saw, and maybe it was because it was nighttime, but like right now it's nighttime. Yeah. Chuck had a video where his white lines looked like they were perfect all the time. Like it, I don't know if it was projecting, maybe it was map data, I'm not really sure. They were white or they were yellow? They were showing white all the way along, like even far into the distance. Mine does never do that. And even on one-way you streets, yours doesn't do that. See, look, yeah. yellow everywhere. It Mine assumes yellow. So it makes me even wonder even more now that when that thing green posted about all the options, if we literally have different toggles enabled on all of our cars, because I took my car to service and their service told me my car was forbidden and they couldn't even access my car data. So forbidden? Forbidden, that's what they told me, it was forbidden. And Tesla headquarters had to be involved to even gain any kind of data. <laughs> <laughs> Look, creepy forward for visibility. Okay, yeah, we're in the middle of the road. <laughs> okay. So I would say that was executed, uh, in terms, it was successfully Snapchat. executed, like we yeah. safely made it, but a human would have never done that. Yeah. Because we like, we, we, <laughs> we stopped really far back and then we, pretty much did like a 60% full acceleration <laughs> through it and then right afterwards we hit the brakes yeah which like okay if anything hit the brakes in the yeah. middle not right after like we just made it is that like a sigh of relief like okay we can slow down now I know I'm just so glad that you're able to confirm what I've been talking about like the car really guns it sometimes and other times it's just like I'm tapping the accelerator here because it wasn't it was just like breaking and breaking, but it went all the way around. That was pretty good, actually. I think that was really smooth, but I don't know how much you helped. I was just 
tapping just a tiny, tiny little bit because it started breaking. Did you feel that first hard break? Yeah. I tapped it there just to kind of get over that little breaking thing. This turn, it's never taken correctly. Just you see how far back we are. Our heads are in this building. There's a, you can't see. I don't know how the car's even knowing. Yeah, there were people running. There's There was a skateboarder. There's a lot going on. Looks like it's a one-way street. It's a one-way. This used to be three lanes. Now it's two lanes with these large bike and parking lanes on both sides. Very interesting the way that they did this here. And but the, the, we can't see where we're sitting. I would say the visualization looks better than our site because it's seeing a little further than us. Maybe because but it's look. elevated. Oh, it's probably that car that it's waiting for. Because it's it's good to it's clear to go. But. It is clear. And so I'm just taking over because it's definitely having some struggling here. But we also made it to our destination. So <laughs> we're going to go pick up a few items and we will. Yeah, the FSD is not turned on. <laughs> I never turn FSD on for pulling into traffic. I don't know if it's even capable at this point in time, honestly. But that's something I never test just in general. I always have full control when I'm pulling out into traffic. One thing that I have noticed in some of the videos, and like today I haven't noticed any issues with, it seems like when it makes the left turn, it's d determining that lane a lot better. Like before it was, like sometimes it looked like it was kind of cutting it a little early or going a little wide. It seems like it's a lot more often getting the lane right. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that Ooh. Was, it makes, but it still got into the lane correctly. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Whoa, this is a little zigzag. Okay, I wasn't watching the screen. Now this is an This is a tough one. Got so close. I wouldn't. Yeah, it's a little close for me. Right, left, right, left. Oh. <gasps> left. Oh. Now we're hitting the brakes for something. I tapped the accelerator because I don't know what it's doing, and there's cars behind us. Oh man. That's happened a few times after oh. the roundabout. It's hit the brakes up. Which yeah. you think it would just accelerate out of the roundabout. Yeah. And normally I just let the car brake hard and do all this stuff, but we have a car right behind us. Like it's even hard to see the front of it because it's so close. And I don't want it rear ending us. Oh, let's see how it handles this. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, it's a delivery. Truck. Amazon. Amazon delivery. So <laughs> I wonder if it's going to cross the it double orange. yellow. Is it going to cross the double yellow or is it going to. Oh Ooh, man, they got close. <laughs> oh my gosh. You were actually fine over here, I could see, but. It looked close, but it, it, it overtook. I didn't do any intervention. <laughs> I saw on the screen before it did it, it was turning orange. So I, wasn't, I wasn't even looking <laughs> at the screen, but I'm glad you were. It did it, it overtook the delivery truck. Okay, this is the car that I was talking about that was right on us. Look at, they're like, get, they're like, I want away from this Tesla. <laughs> Let's see. That was, I think, quite an impressive overtaking. That was actually really sweet, and it was at night. I don't think I've even seen an overtake like that for the delivery truck at night on anyone's and I mean, anyone's as, drive. I don't know as a human what I would have done because, I mean, it's like a double yellow crossing. And it was really hard to see even. It, I felt like it got a little too close to that delivery truck to me. Like, I would have left a little more space, like, yeah. personally, I mean, and then went around. Like, if you're making the decision to overtake, then you just have to do it. And when, once they were in that lane, you could have gone, you know, a little mm -hmm. more to the left. Mm -hmm. It got close to it, but like you're saying, you could see from your side how yeah. close it was. To me, it looked so close, like I was going to hit, but you said it was fine, so I'm like, okay. I was more worried about that bridge back there. That was too close. This was... seemed natural. Yeah. Good. You know, that's why we had that Skydio when we were up in Auburn, like for, like very first beta, I think it was, because it helps us get a perspective from the outside because we can't see how close it is. We just know like it feels close when you're inside the car. 
Um, but it's not always as close as you as you feel like it is, you know. So it's good to have like someone looking, or the Skydio really helped us with the outside views. So was that lane back there? Were you allowed to drive through that? I mean, they were mm-hmm. okay. So Sacramento is really interesting. They have like certain lanes you can drive through from certain times of day. During rush hour like this, the parking lanes you're not allowed to park in, and they're drivable. Oh. So this this here is not like that, but. 16th Street, the far lane you can park outside of rush hours, but during rush hour you can't park. It's drivable. It's very strange. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's very strange. So that street turns into like five lanes during rush hour and three lanes during standard or, or three lanes standard day, five lanes during rush hour. But we're not driving on that road right now, so. It seems pretty smooth so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully I didn't jinx it, but... Well, we're getting to that same area that's always just... It's always struggled for some reason during with these construction zones, and now we're going to be testing it at night, which is even more of a test. Another interesting tidbit. It looks like all these lanes are showing as white, which... Okay, that just flashed yellow, but most of them are showing as white, even projecting far, maybe because of the direction these cars are driving. So mm. now it has a reference point. Mm, to maybe. prove that it's white? I don't know. Like, usually, I, I usually catch that stuff during post editing and when I'm uploading the videos. Because I, you know, when I'm when I'm driving, I'm like looking out my mirrors and making mm-hmm. sure the car's not going to do anything crazy. But that's good that you're able to see that. Because at night, normally, this would be flickering yellow a lot. So you see that that car's block that car was blocking vision and do you see it flickering once the car moved out of the way it started showing yeah. more same with this car uh-huh so it's definitely drawing based on vision and not map data oh that's an aggressive car mm-hmm. sacramento i don't know is this the road that i that you normally have in the videos where no normally i'm on l street okay. this is i street sacramento just because where we were in town now, I would have just moved over already, but because there was the car left a gap. <laughs> We're getting honked. There we get a honk. <laughs> I think we just weren't making the choice last time. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so funny. Like, now you know, now now you guys understand why like I, I try to intervene a little more frequently. Like, we're in traffic and we just got honked at on a straightaway. <laughs> And I mean, it wasn't like they were trying to run us off the road. It's just we weren't making a decision. <laughs> See? Like this. It was our turn. The car's not going. Oh, yeah. It's not going. Oh, there's some autopilot paused. It's struggling. It was flashing autopilot paused waiting for our turn. Now, this is challenging. I mean, look at this. Like, construction. Oh. <laughs> this oh. A little harsh. A little. <laughs> that ghost turn signal. This, you know, this is challenging. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Like, there's construction. It's temporarily moved over the right up here. There's, like, these metal things all over the road to block the potholes. Uh, or in the correct lane, <laughs> but the turn signal keeps kicking on. It's like it's Let Morse. Just, is it Morse code or something? Yeah, I'm just going to take a snapshot because clearly the car is having trouble with something. And I don't know what it's having trouble with. But look at that. Oh, look. When it flicks over here is when the turn signal comes on. See that? When you see it kind of like bounce to the left here, the turn signal comes on. See that? Oh, yeah. Huh. So it knows it has to be in the lane that we're in, but it's not sure. Yeah, like it's not completely sure. Oh, it avoided that traffic pylon thing. I felt the steering wheel go like that really quick just as we drove by it. So I've had earlier builds pull me into that before, and that's why I'm holding the wheel. <laughs> I've had it jerk me into that before I think on older builds. Not on this one, but on older builds. I think the last time I was in, there was that construction that it was like kind of almost like signaling to go into right up here oh now it could be because it's a right hand turn oh yeah 
This is going to be difficult, though, because it has the, the oh, yeah. three arrows. And we're in a right-hand turn only lane right here. So it forces us into right-hand turn only. So we need to move over. Like, we got to move over. And the car behind us moved over just fine. Yeah, they moved over far back. Okay. Oh, that's actually good. This okay. is the correct lane. Good. That that's was, great. That's impressive if that's what it was trying to do. It did. I didn't do anything. I didn't tap the accelerator. I didn't I didn't do anything. Look, yellow. Interesting. Let's see, it's white up here. Let's see what it does. This car's gonna overtake us. Oh man, it was going to the right. It is going to the right again. It's going to the right. They clearly were not happy. Whoa, what does it do? Oh, look, it turned in front of that car. <laughs> yeah, well that car is coming in hot. They too. were going in fast. That it's struggling here. Look, see it's yellow. See how it's yellow? And it keeps picking that right hand lane. Oh yeah. It thinks oh yeah. It's yellow. Can, it does think there's it's yellow. gonna it's gonna mess up here again. See? Oh that's a good observation. No line. Oh and they're flashing us. <laughs> Is that a Ooh, man. Okay. Oh, Hopefully man. that's not like a cop or something. Oh gosh. Now yeah. we're gonna get rid ticket if that was a cop that's for sure this is yeah they're flashing this again this is where it just kept pulling the lanes i'm i don't think i'm gonna engage yeah. fsd until here we should probably drive manually through this section this is where we got honked at in the last video too well it's doing the right speed here for this turn that's not the right turn though yeah, there weren't any cars around, oh so... Oh my gosh, that was rough. But this would make sense if it thought there was a yellow in the middle, because it would have had to go wide. Was it flicking yellow? I didn't even I see didn't, it. I was just watching where we were going. See? Yeah. It, 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 that was not right. Like, it shouldn't have tried... It shouldn't have been, like, going like this and putting us all into the... That's mine, I think. Did yours overheat? No. Um, you can double check. Maybe it's just out of battery? No, really? Okay. USB C or A? That's A. Is that a reach? Okay, it's plugged in. Okay, I think that'll reach actually. I should have just done that. Technical difficulties on our cabin camera, but at least mine's still going for the front. Okay, well, we have a light on. Oh, maybe the battery did die. I think so, because... Oh, 4K60? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, like that'll kill minutes. it. Yeah, that'll kill the battery for sure. But FSD's driving correctly. <laughs> Not sure if the angle of that messed up at all. I'll have to wait till it gets some juice. Oh, that's okay. So it just flicked on the left turn lane for whatever reason. I don't know why. There goes the left hand turn lane again. Yeah, there was a car there and they just moved behind us because. <laughs> This is what I've been complaining about on this street. Actually, in my neighborhood, too. Keeps turning on the... See, look. Lane change. Why? Oh, maybe because of this car? No. We can't, We have to make a right-hand turn. Oh. It okay, looks like we're back. Cut this audio here, if you wanted to. Either way. I'm only going to be using this audio. Yeah. We have our, our lab mics and all that stuff, so we're good. So here is where it was going to turn, but that street is completely closed, so I just canceled the routing and routing us back into East Sacramento. It looks good, I think. Oh, why did it break? Okay. I just reported that because I didn't have to intervene, there was no car behind us, but it just braked suddenly. I felt something <laughs> jerking me around. And I'm not vegan, but it's good. Mm -hmm. I don't think you would know it was vegan. 
someone didn't tell or you. Or gluten free. Yeah. So here is where it actually swerved into the right lane and there was a car. Do you remember when that, in, in a couple days ago, there was that black Chevy that my car didn't like apparently? Oh, yeah. It was like following it or something. Yeah. Right here is where it swerved towards it. Wasn't it like almost going into that park spot or something? I thought we don't. I don't know what it was, and I still don't know what it was because it it was while we crested up. See how the road goes up and then it goes down. It was when we hit the crest, it went to the right. Hmm. So maybe it has something to do with the road going up. Let's see if it does it again. That pathing is like shaking a little. It didn't do it. I think this car might be helping us. Is it giving us a guide, maybe? Yeah, but that black Chevy was next to us. And did the same thing. It went right into it. Hmm. Maybe this is it's... different, you know? And that's what's so interesting about this, is that neural nets, you can take the same route five times, and you can literally get different results every one of those drives, you know? So it's so different. So that's why I kind of like having these test routes that I have, these loops, because you can actually see the performance... And we're doing this at a much different time of day than I normally test. Look at that. Oh, oh there, my there, gosh. There is some yellow on there. Oh, it did. It went yellow. You're right. And now it's... <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. It's, so we don't have cars around us. I'm not intervening, but I'm reporting yeah. the, this. Maybe it's the lighting or something. There's something. You see, you're right. It's yellow. This is a little... That was sketchy. So it's kind of zigging and zagging across that middle line. Oh, as yeah. When it determines it's a yellow, it goes to the right. When it determines it's a white, it goes That's to the left. Exactly what it's doing. And if they can't get that vision right, they need to just opt for map data because that's going to be a really bad thing if they can't get the colors right on the, on these lines. I went for a joyride in the city, like not an autopilot or anything, but just for fun. Just Around to, here? Uh, in San Francisco, just oh. to see if like people were out and about or not. Mm -hmm. There was no one there, but oh. there were there are some weird roads where it's one way, like two lane one way. And then right after an intersection, it switches to just, uh, it's a two-way road. That's what it does here in so Sacramento. It does I, it a lot. So they can't assume that it's going to be one way the whole way See, I, or two and the whole way. So that's why I I, I realize this. They, there is an assumption. Oh, that got close. There's an assumption in the software that every road is two direction. And that's why it always assumes every road is going to be two which I think is safer than the alternative. It is. I totally agree. So that whatever the center line is, it's yellow every time. And then once the vision confirms otherwise, it flips white. But maybe they can use other cues to determine that like this is one way, like everyone's like parked the same way. Like street signs or the car direction to travel. That's true. Yeah. There's there's definitely no logic program to read signs up upper like that. I, I don't think it's reading anything but speed limits at the moment speed limits and stop signs and no I don't even think it's doing yield so again it's like trying to turn left here I'm intervening because there's a traffic there's a car right behind us this is where it swerved where I took that screenshot of Costa Nice Faces like oh. flipping out <laughs> that was right there because it swerved instantly to this left hand lane thankfully there was no car no turn signal just swerved so I don't think it's I don't want to say the car's doing, not doing something wrong. I mean, definitely it's choosing, it's making the wrong decision. But it seems like maybe the data it's using is not, or it's not processing it in a way that is making the right decision. And maybe it has to do with that center line two-way yeah. thing. And that makes a huge difference, I think. that's what it is. If it's constantly switching back and forth. Yeah, thinking maybe it's that's what it is. One way or two way, that would, I think that would explain that weird zigzag. Like on one side it's right, on one side it's wrong. That's got to be what's happening. Oh, so let's talk about FSD Beta Canada. So <laughs> I know that, you know, I've seen everyone doing that tagline on their Twitter. And, you know, I'm not a I'm non-big Twitter person, so I don't really know a lot about this. But I, I want to, you know, I want them to get it in Canada. But I have a feeling that it's not... Okay, so what was happening is it was trying to route around this... Oh. And this is just a one way, one lane, but it was using that other lane as like a turn. Yeah, like it was going to try to overtake this car. Anyway, so what I'm saying is I think what's happening is I think Tesla doesn't want to roll it out to anywhere that has snow. Maybe. 
The, I only know of one other tester that has snow and he doesn't even enable it in the snow because it can be kind of sketchy. Like that's how I feel with this, even with rainy roads, like wet roads, I'm very cautious about it. Cause see how I accelerate so hard there? I don't accelerate like that normally. Yeah. Like I'm really gentle on the acceleration cause you'll slip, you know? Yeah, any kind of sudden side movement, especially, like we just encountered a few side movements a second ago, like that kind of a jut out, if you're, if you lose your traction, then I mean, you don't really have other options. Right, and I think that's why they are not rolling it to Canada yet. So it stopped us really far. I'm gonna flip on the rear camera so you can see this. There's actually, oh, look how bad that looks. There's actually an SUV. Yeah, I can't see. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's the way that their headlights are. Condensation? Maybe it's the way that their headlights hitting the camera, it's glaring off the lens. Hmm. That's actually really interesting here. That's a really unique situation. So that SUV, it's an Audi Q7, I think, big SUV. Their headlight was hitting the lens in a way where it actually just completely cut the visibility out. Like, yeah, it's the perfect gone. height. It was like perfect height. Like it, it completely destroyed the lens. And we actually got a warning saying that it, and that Navigant all plot was unavailable and just pretty much cut out. That was really interesting, actually. Which I don't, I don't know of a lot of cases where the rear camera is used in autopilot, but maybe it, with FSD it does for sure. Oh. Like you'll see everything render behind you, and that's because of the camera behind. Interesting. Yeah. So I guess you need that when switching lanes and stuff. Yeah, it's definitely using the rear camera to detect the speed of cars coming up behind you for sure. I know it's using it because we don't have rear radar. Well, I've had. On, even on my car, I've had, you know, there's that front collision warning, like when you're within like a couple seconds from hitting the car in front of you. So I've had that obviously, but I've had that in the rear too, when I merged onto really? freeway and someone's coming in really hot behind me. It has like a little high pitched whine. Oh, I've never had that happen. It happened in like, LA. So I'm going to let this turn be because a lot of people have said, oh, why don't you let the, <laughs> That's... why don't you just let the car go? You... Now you guys know why we don't let the car go. Okay, you saw it. I let it happen. Now you see what happens. There's cars behind us. We look crazy. Yeah, we were just driving in the center lane, basically. Center lane, and then it wanted to turn back to the right. There's no reason. Like, we don't make a left turn for almost a mile. I'm not in FSD right now. I'll turn it back on in just a second. But that big SUV that's blinding <laughs> the, us is probably like, what's going on? You need your autopilot sticker still? Yeah, I really do. Like, if someone wants to send one to me, I would love it. <laughs> you need one for each side, though, because <laughs> everyone No, just you. the bag, just the bag. Because I tend to get a lot of honks when I'm in doing FSD testing. I have never, I can't even remember when I've been honked at just driving normally, because <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I feel like I drive pretty normal, but FSD doesn't drive normal. Not yet. Yeah, exactly, not yet. And you know- This is interesting. This is interesting. This car's out on the road. It got <laughs> close. Uh, Ultrasonic's only turned yellow, so it wasn't that close. It just but it, it went around it just fine. Normally someone would give them a little bit more space though because you don't know if they're gonna hit the, their accelerator. That's true, that's true. Uh, that's adjustment that can be made. It, it did get pretty close. Like I would have swung out a lot more and given a lot more space, but at least the car slowed down. It wasn't going very fast. It actually slowed for that. But it did get too close. And they were backing up too. So just one more shout out, but because I'm a, I have a Twitter addiction. So for uh, FSD Beta Canada, that's run by the campaign manager, Mother Funker. Yeah. Franklin. He's awesome. Real name. I subscribe to him on YouTube, for so, sure. M Frunker on Twitter. So <clears throat> he's been trying to get people in Canada to get it. I don't know if it snows everywhere in Canada in the winter, but if not, then maybe there are some candidates. It definitely gets really cold, like probably there's ice. You know, I've actually never been to Canada, so I wouldn't know, but I would just assume it snows everywhere because of the where, where the, the placement on the hemisphere, you know? Mm -hmm. Because if we get, see, it never turns left here correctly. That car must think we're just insane. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a left-hand turn here. It just threw on the left-hand turn signal in the straight lane, so. But you had this issue in the last video too, I think, right? I've had this issue in every single 
every single build. This has never been improved. It's never been fixed. I've always had an issue here. It's not that weird of an intersection. It's not. I mean, it's not the easiest, but it's not the hardest. No, you just turn into the center lane like I would normally just turn into it and then make the left-hand turn. So I really don't know what it is about this. Maybe it's because this yellow line, they don't want to cross it, but maybe it doesn't have handling for this kind of this yet. Maybe that's the issue. That's possible. I mean, we know that it'll cross a double yellow. Okay, I just kicked it on right in the middle of, and it worked fine. It's a little aggressive on the turn, you know, like you felt that. I think the turn was perfect because like there might have been cars coming, so we knew to go a little faster. That's fine. But after the turn, it was a little weird, like yeah. aggressive. Like it still stayed aggressive. Yeah. When it could have just, okay, now I can just go straight. Chilled out. Yeah. It is, it is slowing for these really well. You know, I think at night it can see it better because you can see the visibility of those. Oh, maybe, yeah. Sometimes during the day it doesn't. Oh, don't drive in there. Ooh. 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 Oh, God. Oh, it did, it did it just fine. <laughs> it did. I mean, it was a little uh, oh. worrisome, but it didn't have any issues. Yeah. No, it... I didn't intervene. Didn't hit anything. Everything was fine. <laughs> just was a little funky. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe nighttime gets you yeah, the speed bumps I think you can see it a lot better at night. I was a little curious on your videos if, like, because it did that speed bump at 16 miles per hour, I think, for your other videos, too. That's actually fine for these. Yeah. Like yeah, some, these are wide. So some speed bumps are so high that, like, you really want to go, like, 10 or less. Mm -hmm. But the car chose the right speed for these. And you notice it's not, like, it's not swerving around the road. It's like, better. They did fix this unmarked road thing for me. It's not so aggressive. It's way more gentle. That's actually pretty much the only improvement I've seen on this particular build is unmarked roads. And the pathfinding on unmarked roads is just significantly better.